Welcome to our third dailies, and we are still looking at some wedges, and we're going to be looking at some shots, moving shots. So uh, first up here, we have Emma, and Emma is working on the shipyard shot. So she's fixed the 3D lineup, better shadows, more plate used, fixed the concrete, and there's some issues with tracking. So let's go ahead. So this is the plate and her 3D lineup. And that is her uh, shot right there. So if we flick between the two, okay. So uh, what I'm thinking here is that there are, um, th this ground right here is very simple and I think it needs to be broken up with something. So we kind of talked about that before and we said that some of these long shadows would be nice um, on, you could maybe keep those. Um, you did, haven't kept those, Emma. So I think, that, I think that something else needs to go on here. So uh, anytime we're doing DMP work where there's a big wide open space here, it gets, uh, it's very hard to make that look realistic. Um, there's also a little bit of a value change um, between the plate here and your additions here. It's a little bit darker in the plate, um, and it's a bit brighter in here. So um, I think uh, I think what we're missing um, on some of this stuff is uh, there needs to be just maybe a little more of a contact shadow, and then I think there should be something that sells uh, this this area here. So look through the photo library and see if there's something that you can add into this area. Um, we kind of, Emma, you went down this road of, of replacing this, and I think this design-wise is looking good over here. I think that um, this area, this big open space, needs something. So, you know, if we were to, um, you know, put a little marquee over here like this, and uh, fill it with a solid color here. Um, we would say, hey, that's uh, that's starting to work back there, right? Um, which which I think it's it's starting to get there. But when you include this area here, it's just a bit of a hard sell. So also uh, some of the issue is that um, the it's sloping. So visually. Um, there's a bit of a slope. So uh, like it starts out here and then when it gets here, it goes zoom, down like this. All of these lines are going this way that are in the plate, okay? Um, and then when it gets here, it, it kind of sl sloops down, down there like this. So um, if we take a look back at the original plate, um, this um, this line right here, which is fantastic, by the way, this curb, this line, um, I think is maybe what your DMP is kind of missing, is some kind of foreground element like that. So um, let's say, for instance, uh, we were to put that, a little bit of that back in there. Okay, so that's just looking, that's bringing back some of the plate. Okay, and now if we take a look, what, what happens here is that um, we start to see something. We start to see the perspective come back again. So um, we can see that the perspective on this is going this way. It's starting to go back. And then actually what, what it looks like now is that, is that when it gets up to your DMP, it looks like it slopes up and then goes back. If you can see that visually, there's something that goes on there. It doesn't make sense at this junction point because um, this is uh, maybe, I guess, if it slants down there like this and then maybe it stops right there. Maybe that could make sense, but, but really, um, it's really your ground that I think needs the most help. So 
if I turn this off, let me just turn off these lines. So if we look at this, and then we look at this, and we look at this, and we turn this on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So um, really, you just need to follow the cues in the plate. If you follow the cues in the plate, you're going to be, uh, you're always going to be grounded in reality. And I think the replacing of this ground down here, uh, there's one thing it's not, it's too plain. So it loses all the visual cues of perspective. And I think the visual cues that are in there makes it feel like it's slanting down right in the middle of the frame. So, uh, and if, and then by contrast, if you flip this on, then that really feels like it's going back into space because that's part of the plate. So um, I think that uh, we need to look at some options for this area here. So maybe it's bringing back uh, some of the plate here and maybe it's continuing the plate on. Um, I think there's just a little bit of a value, uh, like a value issue. If we were just to grab this here, And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just turn this guy down just a little bit. So definitely the value, you can see the difference. If I'm comparing this to the plate, you can see um, that, that that adjustment makes it feel a lot better right there. Uh, but still those, those uh, it, the, the perspective doesn't read. So. One thing it's the the value. The other thing it's the perspective. Um, so uh, yeah. So like I was saying, the it's a big wide color or it's a big wide area. There's you've taken all all the visual cues are gone as for the perspective and the ones that are there are saying something different than what it should be, and then uh, it kind of takes away all the visual interest of the shot. So uh, I like looking for things like this, maybe it's keeping this, you know, these big lines on the ground are awesome and they could be put in different places and you can have little patterns and things like that, maybe where they park cars or where they're supposed to stay, you know, keep these guys inside the line or something like that, some kind of pattern or design on the ground um, that you could do. Um, you know, if you're looking to do something like this, you could, you know, draw out the pattern in, uh, from a top down view and put it in 3d and render it. And that will give you your perspective lines. So you know that they're spot on. Um, but, uh, but the, uh, that could help, but you just have to find some elements. So, uh, go through the photo library and see if there's some stuff on the ground that you can use. Maybe it's broken concrete, maybe it's curbs, maybe it's paint on the ground, maybe it's some foliage, uh, some plants, some something to go in that area, and I think it's really going to help. Um, also, uh, when I, I would be very careful, like, for this shot to make sure that these values um, stay the same. So if we take a look at... Um, uh, this value right here, um, as it uh, as it changes, oh excuse me, so it's really a lot darker through here, and I think it just contrasts too much with the brightness of that. So I would brighten up this side quite a bit right there. Um, uh, you're gonna deal with this area down here, uh, have a bit more interesting, and then I think. Um, you look on the original plate here, and uh, I can see that this area right here, um, it has a little bit of atmospheric perspective as it's going back in the distance. So it's getting a bit flashed. So if you look on your curves, uh, it's just grabbing it from the bottom end and pulling it up just a little bit, which makes it flashed. And then if you're gonna just make it um, Sometimes that makes it too bright, so you have to pull it down right here. So your curve ends up looking like that. 
a um, little lifted up from the top, lifted down from the bottom, and that's going to kind of simulate a little bit of atmospheric perspective that is in the plate. Also, it's really quite a bit warmer. So if we take a look at this, your, uh, your uh, DMP back here is quite cool. And so I think you can do a lot to make this warmer back here. So if you look at um, the value of these guys and the value of these guys, there's not really a change. And actually, the black values here are uh, darker than some of the black values that you have in here. So, um, so I would uh, lift this area up a little bit. It should be warmer, not so cool, and it should be lifted up. And I think if you, uh, yeah, if you deal with those other areas, I think that would be, I think that would be great. Um, I think you'll have a really solid thing. But composition-wise, like I said, this area, sky up here, put a little atmospheric perspective and uh, make it warmer back there. And uh, I'm not, uh, yeah, and I think that's okay on the sky. Um, that should be fine. I think once you lift that, I think you're going to be in a good spot. So here we are looking at Emma's uh, shot, and I do see that there's the slipping of those elements. So um, it's nice to see this moving and in a shot. Um, I because uh, uh, you can see this kind of going off of frame. So this may indeed be a uh, a camera tracking issue. So I will um, I'll check that camera and I will uh, post a new camera if that is off for that, and then you'll have a better camera to stick to. Um, uh, but also, when you exported, Emma, it looks like it uh, got really flashed in the color. So I would just look at the way that you're exporting things um, and taking a look and making sure that it, the integrity of the image looks nice. Um, or maybe it's the, uh, the codec that, uh, uh, that YouTube is using that flashes everything. Um, so I will look at your export settings and see, and see how you could get a better image out of that. But yeah, it's cool to see it's all coming together in a shot. Okay, so now we're looking at Jeffrey. He's also working on the shipyard sequence. So, um, so uh, you fix the perspective, did another pass on the color correcting and the lighting. So that, um, so this is the plate right here, and um, this is the DMP. So there's the there's the lineup of that. I definitely see that there's uh, a lot of improvement um, on uh, on this. So um, the things that I could uh, probably point out here is um, just some integration things, and these are going to be uh, subtle. Um, I think that these areas in here should be uh, should be darker. So. Um, yeah, so those should probably be darker. Like I said, over here, like I would, uh, maybe grab, grab a piece of something over here from the plate and just drag it over there and see if the value matches. Cause this is in shadow, but it, this is the sun side, but it's in shadow because a tree is there which is probably going to be a little bit brighter than, let's say, this side of these containers here that are facing away from the sun. So um, I think that these would be darker in here. Um, also, I would make sure that you are, uh, you know, you match your black values because this in here seems really flashed, while in here these little dark areas seem very... Uh, very, very black. So something that you can do um, to test your, um, your values is you can just, in Photoshop, you can put an exposure. Um, oh, and they look like they do. So these are the foreground ones, and those get really, those are really quite dark. So maybe... Maybe those are the right values. It's just the, your midtones, I think, have been lost. So if you look at these midtones and these midtones, 
these ones get like flashed and, and washed out. So uh, whatever the color corrections that you're doing, I think is, is making these midtones kind of get all washed out. So probably just lift your backs just a little bit, especially in the back here. And when I say lift the blacks, I'm talking about your color curves, bringing it up from the bottom right there. So on the blacks there, and then probably you should bring it down in the middle so it slopes just a little bit so that you can get back some of these mid-tones. Just make that a little bit darker. Um, so maybe your curve ends up looking like if it's lifted off the ground, it's just kind of curved like that um, to get some of those mid-tones in there, um, which I think would be much uh, better. So also, um, this stuff that's in shadow, um, some of this, uh, you, like the stuff that's in shadow, I think it could be um, just a little bit uh, darker around the edges of, of these guys. Um, oh, also, I think um, around the bases. So there's these base shadow, like an occlusion kind of shadow around the bases. Um, the shadow, uh, like from these guys could come out here, right? Because, because we have a shadow here and we have a shadow here. And so we would see some kind of shadowing because these are in shadow. So we should see a shadow on the ground from these guys. So putting a shadow on the ground, oops. So putting a shadow on the ground, um, there, and then also, uh, there's this really cool thing happening right here where it has these little black spots through there. And those black spots, um, are just the uneven ground and this thing sitting on it. So you could put some of that. I'm, I'm seeing some of it back here, but maybe somewhere in here you can have that. So that's several things with your shadow. Like one, these little black spots, that would be number one. Uh, that you could put in there. Number two is having just a little bit of a, like just slightly darker, this kind of occlusion shadow, um, and it can get, and it can fall off as it goes past here. Um, and then also just more accurate shadow shapes um, because, uh, because right now these guys, this side is in shadow, but these are not, um, these are not in shadow right there. Uh, the ground isn't in shadow. Um, and then the last thing I would say is um, when you have your shadow, I would just make sure it's a little more complex. So it's kind of soft right now. And um, when it's if it's falling over these pebbles and things, then I would just try to make it just a little more complex of a shadow shape there. Um, keep it subtle, but it shouldn't be just such a hard edge. Um, and then maybe the last thing is that there's these little, uh, there's these little pings of light and little bits of shadow right here in your image. Um, and that says that it's, that it's being lit. So, um, the, so what you need to do when you have an image that's in daylight and you're trying to make it seem like it's in shadow, then you need to get rid of some of those shadows and get rid of some of those kicks on the highlight so that it can feel like it's in shadow, okay? Um, so if you can see that, there's little things here here and there that you can, you can get rid of there. Um, also, for integration, you know, what always helps is just and you have a little bit of it there, but if you can put just a little bit of something uh, in the front of these, like if it's just some, just some uh, grass maybe that's grown up, maybe these shipping containers have been there for a really long time, you know, that always helps make it feel integrated. Um, and uh, I think there's also with your ground, I think there's a bit of a scale problem. So the scale of these rocks. The image looks just a little bit stretched here in the back um, for that ground. And uh, there's these rocks and they look just a little bit big 
back back in this area here. So I think scale wise, I think that's a bit difficult. Um, if you can find some photography that um, if you can find some photography that uh, that makes it feel like it's going back into the distance, um, that would probably really help. Um, also, and I know that you did a 3D lineup, but if we take a look at the plate, just kind of do a soft split here. Like what's happening here is that this is going downhill right there. Okay. So, uh, and I think that there is this feeling of going downhill. So, and I think that's communicated through here. So I know that you've done a 3D lineup here, but I think that your ground plane needs to be, um, needs to actually be slanted downwards. So when we look at this, that may be the correct perspective, but there I think are some visual cues on here where this should just be dropped a little bit. So uh, I'm going to take the liberty here of cutting up your image. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this out. And uh, I'm just going to drop this down and I'm going to grab this guy here I'm going to move him down like that except I'm going to pop him up there There we go. So I got rid of that bottom thing because it made it feel like it was slanting. Um, and actually, you could just bring it up just a little bit more like that. Uh, okay. So um, now I'm starting to look at this. And uh, let's see if we can maybe cut this up just a little bit more. Okay, so um, I've made some changes to the perspective on this, and uh, I want to make sure that um, it's looking good. And so uh, what I'll do is A, B it. You know, they say A, B. So that's looking at one image and comparing it to the previous image. So if we look at this and we look at this, up and down like that, I think it's, uh, I think we can see like this to me, uh, the changes that I've made feels a lot better. So this is it, I think kind of floating off on the right side of frame and this is dropping it down, um, which I think is a bit better uh, right there. So yeah, so I would say that this is a better way to go for your perspective. Um, and, um, and like I said, I know you did your 3D lineup, but I think overall that this is probably just a bit too high um, there in the horizon line. It should be dropped uh, to be right there. Okay. So, um, so just, to, just to wrap that up, um, dropping the buildings like I had, the, all of the shadow shape notes, um, and, uh, yeah, then I think, uh, I think it's going to be in a much better place. Restore some of the midtones, make these maybe just a little bit darker in here. And, uh, I think, I think it's going to look nice. 
Um, also, just one more thing before we end this, is here in the highlights, these areas, there's not really quite those spec hits that we're seeing here in the plate, so I would restore those uh, there too. Okay, we are um, taking a look at uh, Maxime's uh, cityscape shot. This is CYA102, and um, so, uh, so there's a version three, the sky replacement, okay? Um, so this is the, uh, the before and after here, and then this is it with a new sky. So, um, all right. So I think we are already in a pretty good spot with the city, and it feels that way still and i think you've made probably wrapped in some of those uh those notes because i don't see um a whole lot of issues uh here anymore um oh yeah so i see that you did add a couple of pings and hits there um the only real thing that i would say is that maybe uh right here on the marriott that it would just be a bit brighter um you can kind of see up here and up here that there's some spots on the building that are just a little bit brighter than others and so uh, I would maybe just put a little bit of a grad somewhere in here where it's kind of brighter at the top and maybe just falls off a little bit just so that there's some variation in the building side because it's really kind of flat um, and maybe there would just be a little bit of kick maybe the kick comes from this edge right here maybe there's an edge right there um, that's going to get a little more of a kick and maybe that's just a little bit of a a light uh, a, a light um, a line right there that kind of makes it and that's really all it needs it just needs a high value right there um, but yeah, like I, like I said, I think it's feeling good. I think it's in a good spot. So, um, now let's talk about your sky. So, um, this sky here. So one of the problems that I see is that there's some blown out bits. Um, you don't want to have blown out bits. And then right here at the bottom, it's really kind of fuzzy. Um, so the transition from this color to this color, there's this kind of fuzzy thing going on. Um... Yeah, so, um, and then there's a, there's like this blue color, and then it goes into this, um, uh, this kind of pinkish color. So, uh, yeah, so clouds are pretty difficult to do, um, and I think you followed the best, like, to keep the same kind of sky. Um, what you'll, uh, what I, you know, sometimes you'll have a sky. And the best thing to do instead of fighting with the sky is just get a brand, just get a new sky. So if you're working from some kind of uh, sky library and adding in the sky, I would um, I would go through and, and try several different skies for this. Um, the one thing also is that when you're doing DMP skies, you want your skies to not take not to be so noticeable. Um, you see this uh, this like really strong shape here, and um, it kind of uh, takes the attention away from the city um, and brings it to the sky. And that's kind of the thing, you know, as map painters, you want your work to be noticed and you want to have these like very picturesque skies. And actually in a production, the VFX supervisors will will shy away from those kinds of skies. They don't want really ornate um, skies in their shots because it's not really about the sky it's about what's down here they just want to have a little more visual interest so you kind of want to make your sky just disappear so um, for the method for doing this um, I would take this sky that you have here and I would try to restore the gradient of that sky so um, so I would create, like, completely take the sky and make it all the way blue. Um, so continue on this gradient here 
And if this guy were to continue on, it would be this color, but probably look a little bit darker as it goes up. And once you have a complete sky without any clouds, then I would go back through and start adding your clouds on top um, is one method of doing it. Um, that way you're starting out with a clean sky, clean gradient, and then adding your clouds on top. So that's probably the method I would use um, for that. Um, and then, um, like I said, I would try to find a sky that didn't have such a strong stylistic feel to it. Um, try to find something that's um, a bit more normal, a bit less uh, showy. And then try to, when you put your sky in there, just make sure that, um, that you don't have any blown out areas in your sky. Um, in addition to uh, making sure that you have nice uh, blends between the sky and uh, the clouds here. Because this right here, these little soft splits and things are really difficult to do. So that's why I say start out with a clear gradient, have a sky up here that works, and then kind of blend it down into the gradient, um, and then and don't pick a sky that has these really big wispy areas because those are some of the hardest things to integrate into your sky. But yeah, so if you've got, if you're working from a sky library, I would just put in a bunch of different skies and try them all out, see how it works in there. So I would say as far as the cityscape, I'd say you're good to go. I think it's in a good spot. Um, and uh, with maybe... Uh, maybe one more, uh, maybe one more note would be, uh, these little black areas here on this building, maybe lifting those, pulling up those values from the bottom, because this whole side is being illuminated, and you can see it in this, like, they're really dark values here, but when those dark values in this building get hit by the sun, then it lifts them up. So here, these are really dark, like they're in shadow, but because they're facing it, they should be lifted. So these little dark stripes right here should probably just be lifted up. So that's the, that's the thing I would say there. And then, uh, I know I said I wasn't going to have that many notes, but uh, maybe a shadow shape on this building. So this guy's in shadow. And that guy's in shadow um, from, I guess, these buildings over here. It's in shadow from the plate. But I think this guy would have a little bit of a shadow shape on him too, maybe from this building. So a little bit of shadow, darken those down, uh, and then I think you're good to go along with a little speck kick on that guy. Okay, and then I think these guys are looking really good. Yeah. Okay, so for this shot, uh, I can see with the export, it looks like it just gets a little bit flashed. Maybe that is um, maybe that is uh, having to do with um, uh, just YouTube's compression. Okay, I do see that there's a tracking issue um, where it's not; it's kind of slipping. Um, would you, uh, Maxime, make sure you go to the website and download a new camera. So um, recently for this shot, um, I believe I exported a new camera for this. And so it should give you a better track. So go ahead and download that and, and let me know if that doesn't, um, if that doesn't hit, uh, if that doesn't improve that. Something also, just make sure your sphere that you're creating is big enough, um, you know, like just make sure it's it's really far out there. <clears throat> Excuse me, really far out there because um, these buildings are really far away. So if you have a sphere that's close and the camera's not tracking very much, uh, not very well, then scooting that scooting that uh, sphere out there really far will probably hit a lot closer because the distance between this point and this point are really quite large. But if your sphere in 3D space is actually like this close to us, then the track is going to be off. So uh, make it, I would first try to make your sphere really, really big, see how it tracks, 
and then if it still doesn't work, go and download the new camera and make sure it tracks uh, for that. Cool.